All right, what's going on you guys? So I got a monster truck update video for you. So I got a bit more work done and I figured I would do a video now instead of just doing one every time I did one little thing. So I'll show you what I got done so far. So right there I got the motor mounted in and that's not the real motor, it's, it's like a, uh, it's called the Mako block. It's like a foam polyurethane, I don't know, whatever it's made of, it's real lightweight. And so that way it's a lot easier to work with than an iron block. It's a lot lighter. So I got that mounted in, which sounds pretty easy because there's a plate in the front and a plate in the back. But to get that thing square in the chassis, which is really important, it takes a bit of time. And I do this stuff by myself. So I got that that's perfectly square in the chassis. And the reason that's so important is because if something's off, even like a sixteenth of an inch, by the time it gets all the way to the tail shaft of the transmission, it could be quite a bit and your transfer case and all that stuff's not going to line up so it's really important you get your motor in there square so I got that that's good let's see what else right there you can see the sway bar so I got the sway bar in front and back I got those through Patrick Enterprises and the arms are out being powder coated so those should be back in the day now so those are out getting powder coated so I got the bar mounted in place well I got the rear bar mounted in I haven't mounted the front bar yet and I'll show you why so the sway bar on the back of the truck mounts at the back of the frame. I couldn't do that in the front because the shocks are so big. These shocks came from Racehorse and they're, they're big and they got the accumulators right there. And the front of the frame's a bit shorter. So in the front, the sway bar, instead of mounting on the end of the frame, it's gonna mount behind the axle. So before I mount the front bar, if you take a look at those two steel plates, I have to cut new ones because those came from Patrick Enterprises, but those are cut out to fit perfectly in his chassis. But this chassis came from Concussion Motorsports, so those plates, I could make them work, but when you're building something like this, you don't want to just make it work. So I ordered the proper steel, which is grade 50, also known as A572 steel, because you don't want to use just like a cheap steel for something like this. So as soon as that comes in, I can cut new plates, mount the front bar, and then by then, the arms should be back from powder coating. So right there's the engine, that's a 540 big black Chevy. 871 blower goes in there, runs on alcohol. And the reason it's all taped up, my friend's painting it up nice. I don't really care about that stuff. If it was me, I would just left it the way it was, put it in. But my friend's real picky when it comes to stuff like that. He's, you know, he builds like street rods, hot rods, things like that, show cars. So he's detailing it for me. So that's cool. So pretty soon, I'll be putting that in. I'm just waiting on the transmission to come in. There's like, there's like three, maybe four transmission places I'm considering. One is Hughes, another one's a Bruzy, or FTI, or Cullen. So those are like the four ones I've been looking at, so I'm just not sure. I'll probably go with a Neil Chance converter for the torque converter. So let's see what else I can show you for parts. Alright, small box on the right, that's just a Moroso accumulator and a couple other parts. Those other parts I think for another project. That's a Profab Dropbox transfer case with quick change gears. There's also a couple manufacture of these, like this is a Profab, SES makes some FTI, a couple others, but I'm always like Profab, the owner's really cool to deal with, he'll take his time, talk to you. Some of those other places, I got the feeling when I call them, like they just want to get me off the phone. So I'm, I'm a friendly businessman, and I like to deal with friendly people, so that's why I want with Profab, and they make an awesome product. And that's a 15 inch drop box. Concussion chassis sets the motor quite low. Low center of gravity. Good stuff. I got both center sections mounted in. Front back. Rear, I run a 620 with a spool. Front, I run a 614 with a locker. All the brakes are hooked up and bled. And if you take a close look at that caliper, technically the brake line should be on the bottom and the bleeder should be on the top because having the brake line at the top and the bleeder at the bottom you'll never get the air out because the bleeder has to be at the highest point for all the air to come out but the easiest thing for me is just open up the bleeder let it gravity bleed so you get a good amount of fluid in and then you could just bleed it at the line that's always worked great for me or you could pull the caliper off stick something in the caliper to like simulate a rotor like whether it's a block of wood or a piece of metal flip the caliper upside down then your bleeder will be the highest point the reason why I don't like to run the line low is because it can get snagged on things, so it's easy enough to get the air out, so that's why I did it that way. Right there you can see the brake pedal mounted in with the twin Willwood 
master cylinders and those little red pieces at the end are residual pressure valves. I talked about those in an earlier video. And on those, you always want to run them as close to the master cylinder as you can. It's always best. So in this case, I had a lot of room so I could just screw them directly into the master cylinder. And it's a pretty simple design. So you push on the pedal and it pushes on a bar right here. And this is adjustable. It's called the balance bar. So if you wanted more brake pressure to the rear, you could just adjust this balance bar to push the master first. But in this application, you'd want them exact because the drivetrain is locked being this four wheel drive. So you would want to adjust them both equally. So that's cool, that's in. I got the steering wheel, steering column, orbital valve mounted in. The orbital valve is for the steering. And the steering wheel's got a quick disconnect coupler on it. So all the steering cylinders, lines, fittings, pressure relief valve is all on its way. From Racehorse, I actually just got off the phone with them the other day. They're all finished, ready to ship out. Just got done powder coating. So those will be here in a few days, probably about a week. So I'll get to putting those in. And the only other thing I'm really waiting on that's probably still going to take a little while is the knuckles and the champagne. So this part's the knuckle, that's the champagne. I run Rockwell PS250s and I have billet knuckles, billet champagnes being made up right now. And the guy who's making them is a really nice guy. He does phenomenal work, amazing work. It just takes a while because he's just a one-man operation. He's got a lot of orders to fill, but definitely worth the wait. So he's almost done with those, so hopefully soon I'll have those. And then I gotta get the axle shafts made up. So if you notice something looks different, that's because this is a new shop. No, not really a new shop. I've owned this building for a long time, but there used to be a guy in here. It was a tenant, he left. He was just, he didn't do much work. He was kind of more of a hoarder. So now that he left, I'm setting the shop up to be really nice. I'm gonna bring all my equipment. I brought my tools. It's a much bigger shop. I can fit a ton of cars in here, a bunch of parts, a bunch of monster trucks. And on the other side of that wall, there's like a bunch of storage rooms plus another two bays. So this is a really big shop and there's a full upstairs storage. So definitely have a lot more room. I wish I moved everything back here sooner. So before I had this truck in my muffler shop, it was kind of a pain because I would roll it out, work on it, and whatever I started that day I had to finish so I could get out of the way to fix customer cars the next day. So now I can just leave this thing set up here. That's why if you take a close look, I made a little cart that I could put the truck on and roll it around. It's on wheels, so it rolls really easily, even with all the weight that's on it now. So it's pretty cool being back here now. I can spend a lot more time working on the truck. It's pretty cool. I actually ran out of things to do because I'm waiting for parts, so I even took the time to polish the aluminum floor on the truck that I made. So that's pretty cool, I guess. A lot of guys run diamond plate, but I never really liked the look of diamond plate, so I went with a nice, smooth aluminum, polished it. So for now, that's about it. As soon as I get more parts, I'll get some more work done on this thing. I'll do another update video. So take care. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.